the total amount of damages that may be imposed shall not exceed the profit gain or losses avoided in the transaction that are the subject of this violation. The total amount of damages imposed against any person under this section shall be dis diminished by the amounts, if any, that such person may be required to disgorge. So to return commissions. Controlling person liability. So if someone at your firm is trading based upon inside information and you're the principal you're not automatically responsible for their liability as it relates to insider trading and to contemporaneous traders simply because you employ them. There's reasons why you might be held responsible for their activities that we're getting to soon, but not simply because you employ them. So really what happens is, is if, if a person is found guilty of insider trading, then any other person that was trading at the same time can bring forth a lawsuit against that person. So for how long can they bring forth that lawsuit? Five years. So it's a statute of limitations on really insider trading violations. It also applies to liability for contemporaneous trading. So five, five years is a statute of limitations. Five years after the date of the transaction that's subject of the violation. So the date of the transaction is the when did the transaction occur? When was the trading based upon material non-public information? Section 21A of the Securities Exchange Act sets forth civil penalties for insider trading. It gives the SEC the authority to impose civil penalties. So no trading based upon material non-public information. The SEC has the right to bring forth an action in a U.S. District Court and the court has the jurisdiction to impose a civil penalty to be paid by the person engaging in insider trading. It is true also that you as the principal has the ability to be fined for their actions if you weren't properly overseeing them. So the SEC has the ability to go after you as a controlling person as well. So civil penalties, so under the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, Section 21, okay, so <laughs> I don't even have to write this down, but I'm going to. No trading on inside information. No sharing of inside information either. Because if you share it and someone trades based on it, you can both get in trouble, which is coming up in a minute. So who can get in trouble? The registered rep that trades based upon it, the registered principal that doesn't properly oversee the registered rep, and the person who shared the information. All of these people, all of them can get in trouble, uh, can get um, fined. Yes, huge fines. and could later on, we'll learn about criminal penalties, go to jail. So the maximum amount of the penalty, so it's section 21A, is the greater of a million dollars or 300% this is what we call triple damages, trouble fees, because everybody knows that they should not do this. No trading on inside information, trouble fees. 300% of the profits made or loss avoided. Or loss avoided. Triple damages. That can be a big deal, for sure. It should be a big deal. People should not do this. 
Such controlling person knew or recklessly disregarded the fact that such controlled person was likely to engage in the act or acts constituting the violation and fail to take appropriate steps to prevent such acts or acts before they occurred. So they have to prove that you knew the person was going to engage in insider trading and that you did not take the steps to prevent them from doing that. Or if such, such controlling person knowingly or recklessly failed to establish, maintain, or enforce any policy or procedure required to protect inside information from improper trading and such failure substantially contributed to or permitted the occurrence of the act or acts constituting the violation then you can get in trouble. So if you should have had rules in place, if you should have protected the inside information, if you should have been looking over the, the registered representatives uh, trading because you're their principal and you didn't do those things, then you can be held responsible. Then you can also be fined a million dollars or 300% of the profits made or loss avoided, whatever is greater. So you're not always liable for them, the registered reps that you oversee, but you could be if you didn't carefully monitor them. So penalties imposed under this section of the Act are paid to the Treasury of the United States. If a penalty for insider trading is imposed upon a person, they should pay the penalty within the time prescribed in the court order. And if they don't pay timely, they, the SEC has the right to refer the matter to the Attorney General who shall recover the penalty by action in the appropriate U.S. District Court. Remedy not exclusive. This is just one part of the act. You can get into trouble under FINRA rules, state securities laws, for trading based on inside information. The statute of limitations to be found guilty for insider trading is, what did I say before, five years after the date of the purchase or sale. So that is the statute of limitations for these civil penalties, five years. So you can be held liable for, to contemporaneous traders. You can be found guilty of insider trading for five years after the act. Now, to encourage people to tell on other people that are engaging in insider trading, we reward informants. So if an informant gives information to the SEC in which there is the imposition of a, of a civil penalty, the informant, or informants if there's more than one, will be rewarded a bounty, which will be 10% of the penalty imposed. So we do have bounties still. So you don't really think about that. So we have a bounty. The bounty amount is 10%. Now what is the profit gained or loss avoided? How do we figure that out? Because we've got to figure out what that is to get to the 300% of that or the three times that. So profit gained or loss avoided is the difference between the purchase or sale price of the security and the value of that security is measured by the trading price of the security a reasonable time after public dissemination of the non-public information has been made. So someone trades based upon the fact that the company is going to get sold, uh, they trade today, and then when the information is released that the company is going to be sold, they look at the price of the stock then, and that's where they determine the profit made or loss avoided. A reasonable time after the information has been made available to the public. Section 21A of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 is the civil penalties for violation of insider trading. And then we move further on within that act to Section 21D. And this has to do with the SEC's authority to uh, proceed with an injunction, the authority they have uh, to prohibit persons from serving as officers and directors, and monetary penalties that the SEC has the ability to impose in civil actions that are 
unrelated to insider trading. So insider trading penalties we already talked about, we just did that. So that's one set of penalties. This is a different set of penalties. So whenever it shall appear to the commission that any person is engaged or is about to engage in acts or practices constituting a violation of any provision of the Securities Exchange Act of 34, the rules or regulations there under, the rules of an, a national securities exchange or registered securities association of which such person is a member, the rules of a registered clearing agency in which the person is a participant, the rules of the public company accounting oversight board of which such person is a registered public accounting firm, or person associated with such a firm, or the rules of the MSRB, Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board. It may, in its discretion, the SEC may, in its discretion, bring an action in the proper district court of the U.S., the U.S. District Court of the District of Columbia, or the U.S. courts of any territory or any pl other place subject to the jurisdiction of the U.S., to enjoin such acts or practices and upon a proper showing a permanent or temporary injunction or restraining order shall be granted without bond. The Commission may transmit such evidence as may be available concerning such acts or practices as may constitute a violation of any provisions of this chapter or the rules and regulations there under to the Attorney General who may at his discretion institute the necessary criminal proceedings under this act. So really what this does is it gives the SEC the ability to impose uh, civil penalties for violation not only of the Securities Exchange Act of 34, but of FINRA rules, of uh, the rules of an exchange. So it, it's not the civil penalties for insider trading that we're talking about here. It's something else that's being done wrong, right? The idea that you should not engage in manipulative, deceptive uh, device, which we talked about many times. In any proceeding under Section 21D, the court may prohibit conditionally or unconditionally and permanently or for such a period of time as it shall determine any person who is engaged in a manipulative, deceptive, or fraudulent device from, from serving, if the person seems unfit, they can bar such person from serving as officer or director of any such issuer. So any person who is engaged in manipulative, deceptive, fraudulent device, now this I'm going to say does include insider trading because within the Securities Exchange Act, we see do not trade based on inside information, but we also see lots of other things that are prohibited, like front running is prohibited. Coordination of pricing is prohibited. They can bar someone who would be, if their conduct deems them unfit, they can bar them from serving as officer or director of, of that issuer. Now, what are the monetary penalties under the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 that the Commission may impose? So, civil penalties for insider trading have already been discussed. So, this is Securities Exchange Act of 34, Section 21D. Civil penalties for other than insider trading. There's three tiers. First tier is the least, second is a little bit more. Third tier is the highest, and I'll show you what, how the penalties get worse. The amount of penalty shall be determined by the court in light of the facts and circumstances. For each violation under the first tier, the amount of the penalty shall not exceed the greater of $5,000 for a natural person or $50,000 for any other person.
So for a business, for a broker dealer, for an investment advisor, for whoever it is that's not an individual. So those are the first tier penalties. Or the gross amount of monetary gain to such defendant as a result of the violation. So the greater of $5,000 for an individual, $50,000 for any other person, or the gross amount of monetary gain. Second tier. In order to be found uh, civilly liable for a second tier violation, the violation must involve fraud, deceit, manipulation, or deliberate or reckless disregard of a regulatory requirement. So it would make sense that the, f that the penalties, the civil liabilities, would be higher. $50,000 for a natural person and $250 for any other person or the gross amount of monetary gain. So not trouble fees here, not trouble fees. Trouble fees are only associated with violations of the insider trading rules. So $50 and $250. So second tier, we need to see there must be fraud or deceit. Third tier is even worse. So not only fraud, deceit, manipulation, deliberate, reckless disregard, there must also be direct or indirectly a substantial loss or significant risk created of, of substantial loss for other people. So that's the worst tier. So by engaging in this fraud, in this deceit, you potentially are, are exposing others to losing money is basically what that's saying. $100,000 for an individual and half a million for any other person. So not only fraud, deceit, Plus, others may lose money too, may lose So the three tiers of penalties under Section 21D. Civil penalties imposed are payable to the Treasury of the United States. If the person should pay but they haven't paid, of course, the commission may refer the matter to the attorney general who shall recover such penalty by action in the appropriate U.S. district court. And the remedy is not exclusive. So just because someone gets in trouble here does not mean they're not going to get in trouble in other places as well. It is possible. Now, we already talked about under Section 21A, what are the civil penalties under the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 for insider trading. But there's also other acts that I need to at least reference so that you know that they also apply as well. So the Insider Trading Sanctions Act of 1984 is the legislation that gave the SEC the ability to seek a civil penalty for insider trading. What is the maximum penalty? We already know. A million dollars or 300% of the profits made or losses avoided. Who can be subject to a penalty? Persons found guilty of trading based upon inside information as well as the people who provide the information to others. The Insider Trading Sanctions Act of 1984 also provides for criminal penalties. So there was a case I was reading about the SEC had found a chemist at the FDA that was passing along inside information to his mother and his grandmother about what drugs were in the final stages of FDA approval and all three of them got in trouble under these acts. So there's the Insider Trading Sanctions Act of 1984 and then there's the Insider Trading and the Securities Fraud Enforcement Act of 1988. So what this act did is it expanded the definition of and the penalties for engaging in the illicit use of non-public information. 
It requires broker-dealer firms to establish written supervisory procedures specifically prohibiting the use of material non-public information by all persons interested in, affiliated with, or in any way engaged in the securities-related activities of the firm. It is equally important to establish who had control over a violation as well as who committed the violation. The controlling person who knew of the violation can be just as liable as the person who actually misused non-public information. We talked about the, the responsibility that you have as a principal over the people you oversee. The SEC has the right to investigate any person who has violated insider trading laws or is suspected of violating. And the SEC has the ability to pay a bounty of how much? We know that already, 10% of the civil penalty that was collected. So what we did is we already talked about the maximum penalties, so we saw those. Securities Exchange Act of 3421A, and then there's the Insider Trading Act of 1984. <laughs> 1984. And then these, there's the Insider Trading Act and the Securities Fraud Enforcement Act, and Securities Fraud Enforcement Act of 1988. So they basically, at this point, all say the same thing. So you know this, a million dollars, this is for the civil penalties. A million dollars or 300% of profits made or losses avoided. Criminal penalties also exist. It is the Justice Department that has the authority to bring criminal prosecution for violation of insider trading laws. Under Section 32A of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, as amended, by the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002, which we commonly just call SOX. The maximum criminal penalty for a violation of the Insider Trading and Securities Fraud Enforcement Act for an individual. So this is a criminal violation for an individual. The maximum is a $5 million fine. So this is separate from the civil penalties. And 20 years in jail. For an individual, a $5 million fine and up to 20 years in jail. So how do you prove that you're not subject to these criminal penalties? The only way you will not be subject to imprisonment is if you can prove that you had no knowledge of the rule or regulation that was violated. So if you can prove you had no idea you shouldn't trade based upon inside information or that maybe you didn't know the information you were using was inside, then you can't be found guilty of a criminal violation. Now a corporation can't go to jail. You can't throw a corporation in jail, but you can impose a criminal penalty on them in addition to civil liabilities. So for a corporation, the maximum criminal penalty, corporation, Got to get them in the in the checkbook, right? Twenty-five million. Twenty-five million. So those I would definitely know. What's the statute of limitations to be found guilty for violation of insider trading laws? You know that already. Five years. That concludes our discussion for information in Section 2B, Supervision of Associated Persons. There's key facts, make sure to read those three times or more before you go and take and pass your test. There is a Section 2B quiz, and then there is a final exam for critical function number two. Remember, critical function number two is 49 questions on your test. Have fun.